Let's Play! Hi guys, and welcome back to Let's Play Analog, A Hate Story. Last time, Hyune told us about her whole experience on the ship, and about how she killed everyone on it. She asked us just if we can hear her out on why. Now, if we say no, we get the ending, actually. If we say no, fine, I give up. You're... You're impossible! I thought somehow you'd be different from all the others, but no, you're just as cruel. Why? Why did I... Why do you have to be this way? I just... I tried to like you, but... I'm through. I refuse to keep talking to you. And then we get a connection error. And it's done. That's it. We... We've... You actually get an achievement for doing this, but uh, it's one of those achievements where you do get it and then you feel like a jerk for doing it afterwards. So no, of course, I feel, we, we understand. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're, you're a really good person. Much better than me. Thank you. Then, very well. It's probably just better if I show you. There's a data block that contains all logs that matter, but my family encrypted it because, well, it should be obvious why after you read it. You need to drop the terminal. You need to drop to the terminal and type decrypt block 7. Let me know once you've done that. I'll show you. Well, we'll go do that, I guess. So, we go back to the terminal. And we go decrypt block 7. All right. Let's go back. How do we do that? Uh Oh god. How do we get back into it? It's been so long since I played it. Oh, quit. I should know that. What am I talking about? Very well. These are really hard for me to read. I haven't I haven't seen mine since I wrote them and I haven't seen my family's well ever. <sighs> well, I think I've found here. I've added some just Please, read them. If you want to know the whole story, those entries will explain. Well, let's go read the stories then. So, Block 7. The Nightmarish Bride by Hyo Ming Jun. It seems that in the year I spent visiting my parents, everything has gone to hell in my husband's family without his knowing. Clearly, I never should have left. He has an idea, but he doesn't, doesn't understand just how bad things have gotten. When I left, it all seemed under control. The Pale Bride would be of the right age to be married to the Emperor soon enough, and we would be able to use that connection to bring favor to the family. A good plan, except it turns out the Pale Bride is not even close to be ready for marriage. Age has nothing to do with it, it's the maturity that she lacks. When she first awoke, awoke right before I left, she seemed a little confused but that was hardly unexpected. She had a whole new family to get accustomed to, and it seemed obvious enough that anyone born so far in the past would have difficulty adjusting to modern life. But this is far beyond that. There's something simply wrong with that child. When I got back, the first thing Young Suk's wife did was tell me about how, she, how sorry she was for not being able to control the child. I rolled my eyes. As if a grown woman couldn't handle someone of her age. How are you going to raise my grandson like that? I asked. She was quiet. And let me see the, pale, see the pale bride for myself. The first time I saw young Sook try to get her to do something was as simple as sort out his laundry. She wasn't just disobedient, she was openly defiant. When I stepped in to admonish her, it, simply had, it, absolutely, it had absolutely no effect. All she did was argue back at me. I tried every approach I could think of, appealing to fiality, explaining how important a virtue how important a virtue obedience was, even trying to appeal to her sentimentality, everything. She was just kept saying the same thing over and over, that it wasn't fair to make her do it. Here's the obvious concern, and it's what I said to her. Are you going to tell your husband when he's not being fair when he wants something from you? I thought that was put some sense into her, but no, she answered yes. There's no way this unruly child could possibly be marriageable, not like this. She'd be sent back within a day, and with good reason. What man could possibly want a nightmare like th like her in his life? Mother, huh? I really don't know what to say about her, even now. 
It's the first time I've read what she wrote, and it's just... Well, there's more. Here, read them for yourself. At this point, I knew exactly what was going to happen, but uh, I'm not going to say anything. This one's by Hyune herself. The good news is, health-wise, I seem to be doing much better this month. I'm sure this isn't a permanent thing. It's happened before. I can't really remember how the doctor from the past explained it anymore, but he said it was normal and not something to get my hopes up about. Still, some days this month, I actually had energy to move around. Not that I could move around, of course. I couldn't leave the house. A good girl shouldn't, is what everyone keeps saying. But I have the energy to, at least. And that's something. The big news is that the woman who's supposed to be my adopted mother came back. I really didn't see her much before she left. I might as well have been meeting a new person. I wish I could say I had high hopes for her. That I had thought that maybe she'd be fine. That'd be a lie, though. I knew she'd be as bad as the rest the, as bad as the rest the moment I saw her. And she was. Of course she was. She's even worse than sister-in-law. She gives those awful lectures. I can't even describe them. They're that horrible. She's that horrible. If you're so worried, why don't you just explain everything to her, simply and rationally? Jiang Su asked me. My response was rational. She's a woman. We're not particularly rational. He said, You know what I mean. I could hardly do it. But coming from a woman, she will un understand that it's for her own good. But perhaps she will understand that it's for her own good. Maybe, I said, doubting it. But I tried anyway. She took her time, uh, she took her time arriving after I summoned her to my room. Can we speak? I asked, trying to keep my voice calm. She glared, then snapped. Fine. I asked her to sit down, but she refused. Look, I said, trying to speak to her as an equal. I still didn't think my husband was right, but it was worth trying. I've been told that you'd rather be called Hyune, is that right? She said yes, bitterly, not giving me much to go off. It's a very pretty name, I said. Thanks, she said, but her voice was still unfriendly. My parents gave it to me. I said, you must miss them very much. She nodded. I don't understand, Hyune. Were you so difficult with them too? No, she said. They were nice. They actually cared about me. They're nothing like you people. I sighed. I care about you, Hyune. You're a part of the family. You're a Kim. Your parents are our ancestors. And I know they think it's very important that we raise you right. If you want to be a bad, unfilial daughter and treat us without any respect, well, you wouldn't be the first. Do you really think an old woman like me really cares that much about your opinion of me? I thought maybe I'd try to appeal to her selfishness. Her marriage is important to the family. But clearly, she doesn't care about filiality. It's you I'm worried about. Do you do you think any husband is really going to put up with you the way you are for even a second? Whoops, that went too far. She kept glaring at me. That's all you keep talking about. Marriage, marriage, marriage. I'm 14. I'm 14 years old. What's wrong with you? Why does everything have to be about some man? Why do, you ha why do I have to marry someone that you picked? She screamed at me. I remained calm. You're going to become a royal concubine, Hyune. We're not dumping you off on just anyone. There's no better man. I don't know if you were already engaged in the past, but your parents would do the same if they could. It's what's best for you. They would want this. No, they wouldn't, she shrieked. They wanted me to grow up. They wanted me to be an independent woman. That's what mom and dad thought was important. I don't want to be a concubine. I don't care about marriage. An independent woman? They wanted you to be a whore? I asked, my patient run as thin as anyone else, anyone's would be. I didn't think for a second my husband's ancestors were the monsters she was making them out to be, and was sick of this. Get out! I snapped at her. Just get out. <sighs> I... just... are you showing me that because you want more from her? Well, that's not why. Yeah, I didn't think so. I don't know what to say. She was so cruel, so... so, so cruel. Now that I read it from her perspective, it doesn't... it doesn't change anything! Fine, she actually believed what she was saying. It doesn't make all of it right. I hate her. I don't care if she's long dead. I don't care if I was the one who did it. I still hate her. I hate her, I hate her, I hate her, I hate her! I... I... Jeez, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to work myself up like that. It's just... you don't pity her, do you? I don't. Good. Me neither. 
That's what I had to live with, reading what she wrote. She honestly believed that. It reminds me of how I ended up thinking, how I completely gave up and believed her attitude. She tried to wear me down. She succeeded. She doesn't deserve pity. I didn't deserve what she did to me. I just... I could never forgive her. Ever. I... I I'm really glad you understand. Sorry. I've calmed down now. It's just hard to think about, even now. I really do hate her. Oh, we can show it to her again to get the other side. We could get the other part of it if we want. There was... There was this one big fight I had with her. The one that changed everything. The one I finally lost. My diary makes it sound really dramatic. I know I was young at the time, but it really was. Just read it. It's exactly how it went. Oh, that's not good. The New Anxiety, Young Sook's mother. Or Young Sook's wife. Dearest mother. My mother in law has relieved me of my any responsibility of looking after the pale bride. As a matter of fact, I feel bad that a simple child is too much for me to handle, but I'm certainly glad she's not my problem anymore. Now, I can put my undivided attention back where it belongs, onto my husband and his ambitions. Tell me though, mother, because I knew we didn't always get along that well. I was never bad, was I? Sure, we were both happy when I moved out. Well, perhaps I wasn't happy right away, I was more scared, but I'm sure you were relieved to have some space. But you would have never given up on me, right? I was never that bad, was I? Deep down, I worry. My husband seems content to take his time to have a child, and which is a decision I can certainly live with. But what about when we do? What if we have a daughter? Will I fail with her too? I've been telling myself that it's not me, it's her. She's a peculiarly, oh, I can't say the word, peculiarly unruly child. It's not ordinarily that bad. It's not, right? Please tell me I have nothing to worry about. Please? You know, I never did like her. When I woke up, she was just this awful person who kept saying the most awful things. Never as bad as my mother, but still. I didn't read any of those letters when I was alive, of course, but... You know what really surprised me? She made such an awful impression on my life. I hated her the most for so long. She barely... She barely even ever mentioned me. All my suffering, just a minor distraction to her, nothing more, insignificant compared to her man. I... <sighs> There's one more from her that you should read. I don't know how to feel about it, I don't know how to feel about her. There's just one thing that I kept thinking though, just one thing. I have no idea what her name was. Oh, well. Well, here we go, The Pale Bride, my last stand. Dear Diary, Everything managed to spiral out of control so quickly today. I wasn't planning on it happening this way. But here's the point where I make my stand, I guess. It sounds dramatic, but... I won't just let them marry me off to some stranger. I won't. I won't let them. Just before dinner yesterday, Mother told me I had to go do an interview with some man. The Emperor, I guess, for all I care. The way she put it was... I'd get a chance to see that he's a man you could fall in love with or something stupid like that. As if, I said in response, and I spent the rest of the evening thinking about what I could possibly do to make it clear I wouldn't let them do this. This morning, after breakfast, sister-in-law showed up in my room. Good morning, she said. Today's a big day for you, isn't it? Mother-in-law wanted me to help you get dressed and made all, and all made up. You'll want to make a good first impression, after all. I glared at her and summoned up all my courage. No, I said. What? she asked. No, I'm not going. She left, and Mother came in herself. This was it, I told myself. This was the big moment. I'm not going, I said, before she could say anything. I'm not going to be dressed up. I'm not going to meet him. And I'm definitely not going to get married, I shouted. For a moment, she said nothing. I didn't move. Then she left without saying a word. I thought that would feel good, but it didn't. It just made me worried more. I couldn't have possibly won that easily, I thought. And I hadn't, of course. After a few minutes, she returned with father, who looked incredibly angry. Min Jun says you're, you you ah Ming Jun says you refusing to get ready for your interview. Wait, Min Jun says you refusing you refusing to get ready Yeah, it's just a gram grammatical error. He said, Yeah. I stammered, not getting used to talking to him. I won't! 
I won't go. I won't, and I won't get married. He will, he walked over in just two stride strides, then glared at me for a second. I had no idea what he was going to do. Then he slapped me in the face so hard it knocked me over. Yes, you will, he said. I'll drag you there kicking and screaming if I have to. My face in so much pain, I forced myself to sit back up. I won't, I said, bracing myself to be hit again. He did. Yes, you will, he said. I couldn't keep this up. It already hurt so much. I couldn't just brave that out. Then it came to me. If you make me do the interview, I said, now tell the emperor, emperor that you've been conspiring behind his back. It was all I could think of. All I could do was cross my fingers that the threat worked. It had to. He glared at me, and in that moment, I knew. It worked. The two of them looked at each other, and they both left together. That was three hours ago. I don't know what's going to happen now. I think my face is swollen. It still hurts. I didn't want it to go that way. So that's me, making my stand. I'll, I'll get to that, but for now, please, just look at everything else first. Drastic measures. We'll read this next time, guys, because, uh, yeah, this is where things go crazy.